Welcome to section four of chapter two, where we're going to talk about how fast things move. And the main idea of this video is that an object's velocity is the rate of change in its position. So we're going to answer the essential questions, what is velocity? What is the difference between speed and velocity? How can you determine an object's average velocity from a position time graph? And how can you represent motion with a pictorial, physical, and mathematical models? So a few terms that we're going to need to uh, make sure we get from this video are average velocity, average speed, and instantaneous velocity. They're all very similar, but they're slightly different. We need to understand their subtleties. So first, let's consider a position versus time graph where we have a red jogger and a blue jogger. So we have two different people jogging here. The slope of the position versus time graph, so this is the important part, the slope is the average velocity. That's the object's average velocity. And so we know slope is rise over run. Well, if it's position versus time, the rise is going to be a change in position. That's delta x. And the run is going to be a change in time. That's delta t. That gives us the average velocity. And so the average velocity is the change in position over the change in time. So looking at the red jogger, we could find the average velocity this red jogger has. We could look at the change in position of 6 meters minus 2 meters divided by 3 seconds minus 1 second. So that gives us 4 on top, 2 on the bottom, and that's 2 meters per second. Whereas if we look at the slope using the same calculations of the blue jogger, we find that that jogger is 1 meter per second. The sign of the slope is important as well. When we're talking about velocity, the sign tells us the direction that it's moving. So if we have a negative slope, we know the average velocity is negative, and so this object is moving in the negative direction. However, the slope's absolute value is the average speed. So if we look at, well, this is negative 5 meters per second, the absolute value of that is 5 meters per second, and we say that is the average speed. Now, if you look at the difference here, we have a bold V up top and an unbolded V down below. So when we have a bold V, that's talking about velocity, and unbolded V, that is talking about speed. The speed and direction of an object at a particular instant, so this is these two are talking about average and if we want to look at the velocity at a particular instant, that is the instantaneous velocity. Think of, take a snapshot, what is the speed on the speedometer and what is the direction at that moment. That is the instantaneous velocity. So let's look at a problem here. And we want to know what is the average velocity of the object whose motion is represented in this graph. And also, what is the average speed? So first, what is the average velocity? So we know average velocity is the slope. And we look at this, one thing that we can pick out right away is that it's a negative slope. And so negative means it's going to move in the negative direction. That's the direction that this thing is moving. Well, what's the rate at which it's moving? Let's find the slope. So we select any two points on the graph. We've chosen the y-intercept here at 0, 50, and this point down here which actually the circle is in the wrong spot. We're taking this point down here at the x-intercept as well. So 0, 50, that's our first point. And then at 25 seconds, we're at a position of 0. So we find the slope here, and we get a slope of negative 2 meters per second. So that tells us that our average velocity is negative 2 meters per second, but our average speed is 2 meters per second because speed is talking about the magnitude or the absolute value of the velocity. If we think back to our algebra, we know that lines can be written in the form y equals mx plus b. Well, we can write this similarly for a position versus time graph that is also a line. And we can represent, instead of y, we're going to put in x because that's our position. Remember, the position is on the vertical axis. So we'll put x is equal to the average velocity, which the average velocity is just the slope here, times t, t is our independent variable, plus our initial starting value, which that's what b is. b is the 
part where we begin or our starting value on the y-intercept in linear functions, well here that's just going to be our initial position. And so this table kind of shows you the, the connections that we're making. We're changing y over to x and we're changing the slope over to the average velocity. Our independent variable is t and our starting point is xi or our initial position. Let's take a look at another example here. And if we have a car that is initially six meters east of the origin, it drives west at a speed of 12 kilometers per hour. What is its position after 1.2 hours? So we have an initial position. This is our x initial. Okay, so that's our x initial. And then we have a speed here. So that's our average speed, or we can use that as our slope. And we want to know what is the position after a time. This is our time t. So we can sketch the problem to see that we start initially over here at 60, or excuse me, 6 kilometers east, and we're driving to the west 12 kilometers per hour. So to find our position, we're going to use that same equation that we had and we'll solve for the unknown, the unknown being that, in that final position. So we put in the negative 12, and excuse these units here, they're a little screwed up. That should be kilometers per hour, and that should be kilometers. And so this should give us 8.4 kilometers, not uh, meters, but 8.4 kilometers. So hopefully now you are able to answer these essential questions and you have a good understanding of these three vocabulary terms.